Spirit what God asks us to do. The Holy Spirit's always ready and willing to help us, but we're not always ready to surrender right. our will to His will. And you know, that's really the main thing that God wants. He wants us to surrender our will to His will. It's kind of an interesting thing mm. to get up daily and say, you know, God, I don't know what you're going to ask me to do today or ask me not to do, but I'm making a decision that my will is your will, right. whatever it happens to be. So, so spiritual maturity right. comes saying, with yeah, those steps of obedience. You don't buy the anointing with right. obedience because everything that God gives us is by his undeserved favor. It's by his grace. Mm -hmm. It's by his mercy. God doesn't give to us because we're good. He gives to us because he's good. Right. But he also loves us enough that he's not going to release us into the fullness of something without seeing that we can handle it properly because otherwise right. it can end up hurting you and not helping you. Yeah, well, that, that's very helpful. So here's a question from Marjorie. And she said, on the show today, you spoke about radical obedience. My heart is longing to be completely surrendered to the Lord. However, abuse from my childhood and lies of the enemy have made obedience difficult to understand because I developed in unhealthy ways. So how can I completely surrender? Well, being abused myself, I understand that rebellion toward any kind of authority is not necessarily because you're a rebellious person. It's usually fear-based. Mm -hmm. It's afraid that nobody's really going to take care of you, so therefore, if you submit to their authority, you don't know what they're going to do. Mm -hmm. So we have to learn to replace that fear with faith in God and to realize that also, although people may behave one way, God is not like people. He doesn't do things the way we do them, and we can always trust God. And then the other thing that I think, just as a word of advice, is to, the, the thing that came to me when you first started talking about her question is, you begin in little things. You begin by obeying God in little things, little promptings of the Spirit that you feel like that, that He gives you. I had a very difficult time learning how to be submissive to my husband's authority over my life in our marriage. And it would show up in all kinds of ways that didn't even make any sense. I mean, even if Dave wanted to go in a different direction in the car than I wanted him to go to get somewhere, I could get really just, you know, upset about it. Yeah. And I even started in little things like that when I felt like the Holy Spirit would just say, just be quiet. Hmm. You don't need to say anything. Just, just say, okay, and let him go. Yeah. And so I would take that step of faith. And then as I did those little things, it became easier then. So now, even if there's something that I really do disagree with Dave about, but he's real firm about it, then I just know that I'm in God's hands, and I trust God that if Dave is wrong, that he got that God's the only one that can change that. And if I'm wrong, then I want to see that I'm wrong too. So. Yeah. So trust is a huge part of obedience. I've never really looked at it. And that when way. you when you've been mistreated. Yeah. That's a very challenging thing yeah. to do. So I remember mm -hmm. one time, you know, when God was dealing with me, I said, how can you ask me to trust him after the way men have treated me? And the, the answer I felt like I had back from the Holy Spirit is I'm not asking you to trust him. I'm asking you to trust me. Yeah, yeah. Well, here's a sweet question from a 12-year-old named Michelle. She says, I wanted to ask you about loving God because I feel that is a big problem in my life. Every time someone says, love God with all your heart, I feel like I don't really get what they mean and I'm being disobedient. So how do I love God with all my heart? Well, actually, it's quite easy to love God with all your heart. The harder thing is loving God with all your words and thoughts and actions. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and so I really think that we can have a perfect heart a long time before we have a perfect performance. And I can venture to say that if that little 12-year-old girl cared enough to write that question, That's that she already thinking, yeah. loves God with her whole heart. There's a lot of love in that question. Yeah, and to be honest with you, I think you have to love God with your whole heart first before you're going to love him with all of your actions. And I also believe that there is a promise in the Word of God that says, if you love me, you will obey me. And I think instead of that being a threat, that can come across like a promise that the more we love God, the more we let him love us, the more we are going to just naturally want to obey him. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that the love of God constrains us or it controls us. And so I know even like in the early years of my relationship with Dave when I still had all that rebellion in my soul, I got to the point where even though there was maybe something I didn't want to necessarily do 
because Dave asked me to. I was willing to do it because I felt like God was asking me to do it. And I'm sure he felt the same way about me in many situations where I was being difficult to get along with. And, you know, maybe Dave would have preferred to just say I'm out of here, but he felt like, you know, God wanted him to stay. Yeah. So I think that we probably do love God with all of our heart a lot sooner than what the enemy would like to let us think that we do. I don't think it's always a heart problem. It's usually a behavior yeah. problem. And your behavior will catch up with your heart if you just stick with it. Yeah, that's very true. I think sometimes when that is our desire so strongly to, to be obedient that sometimes when we do have little missteps, God knows our heart and he pulls right. us back onto that path. There's a scripture in Romans that comforted me a long time ago when I read it where I don't remember the exact reference, but I think it's in Romans 7 where Paul said, I thank God that you have come that you have become obedient to the standard of God with all of your heart. Mm -hmm. And I, one day when I was lamenting about my behavior and I couldn't do this and I wasn't able to do that and I failed in this and that, you know, first of all, if your heart's not right, it's not even going to bother you. If you don't have a good heart toward God, it's not going to bother you that you're disobedient. So the very fact that it does bother you is a sign that you've probably got a lot better heart attitude than what you might think that you do. And the key then is to not become condemned mm -hmm. about your behavior, but to continue to believe that you are the righteousness of God through Christ and through his yeah. grace. And that even though you're not where you need to be, thank God you're not where you used to be. Right. You're making the journey and you're not going to quit until you arrive. Well, that ties very well into um, this question, which comes from Trinidad. And it says, does God's plan for me include or make provision for my times of disobedience? Because he knows that there are times that we're not going to do it right. So how does all that fit into God's plan? Well, I think, you know, there's probably a long and a short answer to that. And I'll just start with the short answer. First of all, God knows us a long time before we ever even arrive on planet Earth. He knows us completely. All the days of our lives were written in a book before we ever lived one of them. So God is not surprised by our behavior and he still invites us into relationship with him. And I think that in God's plan, provision is made for our weaknesses. That's why God sent his son Jesus to die mm -hmm. for us. If I had no weaknesses, I would not need a savior. And so God knows that we're going to need help every single day of our life. So when Jesus ascended to be at the right hand of the Father, he sent the Holy Spirit as our helper mm -hmm. and the one who leads us into truth and guides us and, and leads us in righteousness. And so thank God we have help every moment That's of right. every day. There's never a time when we don't have help. Yeah. And at the same time, that doesn't give us a freedom to no. do whatever because God's going to cover it. And, you know, really the truth is, is if your heart is right toward God, that's not even going to be a thought in your mind. Right. I mean, right. I don't, I have no problem at all preaching freedom to people and that they don't have to be afraid of not being pleasing to God because anyone who really has that right relationship with God, that's not what they're looking to do. Right. Okay, here's a question from Lorelai, and she says, the influence of others, especially those who are sometimes closest, often lead me into compromise and disobedience. So how do I break free from choosing the wrong kind of influence and begin to walk in obedience to God? Well, two things. One, you can choose better friends. I think that it's very important. Probably who we choose as friends and who we let influence our life is much more important than what people can even begin mm -hmm. to imagine. Yeah. So choosing better friends, choose somebody you want to be like, not somebody you don't want to be like, that's our choice. You know? And so maybe there might be a period of loneliness while you're waiting for God to bring divine connections into your life, so you might need to be willing to go through that. And then the second thing is, is you have to come to the point where you're, you want to be a God pleaser more than you want to be a people pleaser. And we all have People-pleasing issues, especially in the beginning of our walk with God, we're very much tuned in to wanting people to applaud and wanting people to approve and wanting them to smile and nod. Yeah. I mean, even simple things like, do you like my hair? You know, do you... <laughs> and then, you know, when it comes to big life decisions, Satan knows very well how to use the rejection of people against us yeah. to get us to try to walk away from God's plan. And I, you know, I can't give an answer to this question that's not gonna require a little bit of sacrifice. You might have to walk away from some friendship and be lonely a little bit waiting for God to give you another one. But anything that we're willing to give up for God's sake to do things his way, he will always give back to us many, many, many times over 
while we're still on this earth. Yeah, well, and especially when out of that obedience, we do feel the anointing flowing through our lives and seeing what he's able to do. It, it makes a big difference. It makes it all worthwhile. I'd much rather have the presence of God in my life. Absolutely. And to have that manifest presence of God and to yeah. know that I'm pleasing to him than I would ever want to just have uh, a person applauding me. So really, you know, power is connected to obedience. We don't buy power with our obedience, but I believe that when we're obedient, it proves that we're mature enough for God to release that power and that anointing in our life. And so just like the alabaster box had to be broken for the sweet perfume in it to be poured out, sometimes we have to be willing to let this outer shell of our own will and our own ways be dealt with by God. There's wonderful things on the inside of every single one of you that are put there by God as his gift of grace to you. They're nothing you've earned, but they're in there. And if you will let God have his way in your life, you'll see every one of those things come out of you and not only be a blessing to you, but be able to help people all over the place and your life can bear much fruit. We're offering you a four hour CD series. Now think about this, four hours of teaching, that's four times 60, that's a lot of minutes of teaching that are about obedience, following the narrow path to the greatest life. The Bible says that there's a broad path that leads to death and a narrow path that leads to life. And we're offering this to you today for your gift to the ministry of any amount. Your gifts help us with paying the TV bills, reaching out to hurting people around the world. And not only that, as you help us, then we're able to help you. We offer certain series for any amount because we want everybody to have them. And I think this is an important one. So you do your best. I believe that you'll send in your very best gift. And some of you can do a little more than others. So just do the best that you can. Get this series. You might even consider getting it for a gift for someone. And I believe that this teaching is gonna be a real blessing to you. God bless you. You have a great, wonderful rest of the day. I'm here at our St. Louis Dream Center. Behind me is a back to school event aimed at giving away school supplies to the children living in the city of St. Louis. Today's festivities are not just about providing necessary school supplies and clothing. It's about bringing hope to a hurting community. It's about telling people that God loves them in a tangible way. I'm asking you to partner with us in this outreach and others like this all around the world. Thank you so much for helping us take away someone's pain. Well, you know, I would love to see you make plans and attend one of my conferences. You might say, well, why should I go to a conference when I can see you on TV every day, Joyce? Well, you know, our TV program is really just like an appetizer where being at the conference is the main course. It's just really wonderful to join in with other believers and to experience the presence of God during the praise and worship that we have. So please make plans to join us. I really would love to have you there. Don't miss your chance to see Joyce live. Inspiring worship, life-changing teaching. The Joyce Meyer Conference is coming to Hershey, Pennsylvania, August 7th through 9th with Worship by Fused Worship. And Toronto, Ontario, August 21st through 23rd with Worship by Israel Houghton. All sessions are free. For more information and a complete conference schedule, visit us at JoyceMeyer.org or call toll-free 1-866-C-JOYCE. Thank you, friends and partners. Together, we're sharing the love of Christ around the world. To find out more, please contact us or visit us online at JoyceMeyer.org. Join us in partnership as we share the love of Christ around the globe. The proceeding was paid for by the friends and partners of Joyce Meyer Ministries.